us about your shirt and where did you get it today? Uh, this one, I forgot where I got it. This is though, um, this is a rayon shirt and it's done by a company called Jams World. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say that a lot, most of my shirts originally, I got them over in, traveling the world, surfing, and I would get them at different islands. And not mm -hmm. only just Hawaiian islands or, mm -hmm. or in French Polynesia, but also like in the Caribbean, like I got a couple of shirts on Aruba one time and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Barbados and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and so I, sometimes I forget which shirts I got where. And then mm -hmm. some, what I did was when I, after many years, uh, starting a few years ago, I actually would, would, I would order them online from Hawaii, you know, mm -hmm. okay. as I felt I wanted, like for birthday, uh, give myself a birthday gift, I'd buy three or four shirts. And, yeah. Yeah. So, but I have, like I said, I have a hot, lot of shirts. And uh, so this one, this is your 13th shirt. Yes. Which means we have to do the math 13 from 169. We got a long way to go, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so long way to go. I know we should do like 10 minute segments <laughs> yeah, really. and then do a wardrobe change. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's funny. But today I wanted to talk to you about either uh, some of your hobbies that's kept you um, happy and sane from either this we can either talk about horsing, fishing, or um, surfing. Well, you know, we probably could do all three. And by the way, I would I will do is, especially with the horse horses and fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you uh, edit this, mm -hmm. I will send you some more pictures because oh of, yes yes right? of those. I mean, I have I have a gigant I have a big scrapbook when because remember I, I charted so whenever. I char had charters, I would take pictures of the people and the oh. fish, the fish that, they, that they caught. And then with the horses, I had a lot of ho uh, pictures of my horse or that, and pictures that people took of me on my horse. Yeah. Like, riding, galloping, doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, sur the surfing ones are harder to come by because uh, I had some from pa newspapers and magazines and whatnot. Um, but uh, most of the time, you know, uh, if, if, if certain if other people didn't take the pictures mm -hmm. then i they weren't you know like i remember when i first met my wife and i took her went out to south end we were surfing one of my favorite beaches out called by meacock's bay called a place it was called flying point mm -hmm. so i take her out and of course and i'm out there i'm surfing my brains off you know and i'm doing my hot dogging i'm i'm hanging five i'm hanging ten i'm making these big sweeping bottom turns and getting locked in the tube it was a really good surf day so I came out and said, did you see that? Did you see any of my rides? And she goes, no. <laughs> I was sunbathing. My eyes were closed. Like she could not care less. Could oh, not. that's funny. It's really funny. And, and then, but it was funny because she would go to places. In fact, her daughter uh, had gone to a number of, I guess, a couple of places she worked and mentioned my name. And they, they were surf, there were guys who, who surfed and knew me. And she said, she goes back and tells her mother, you know, Bill wasn't lying. I thought he was lying about how good a surfer he was. Oh, no, they talk about him like he was a baseball fan. Talk about, you know, Mickey Mantle and stuff. Oh, and she, wow. Yeah, she was surprised. Mm -hmm. One of the faculty members, too, uh, I don't want to mention her name, uh, had gone to a party with uh, uh, a boyfriend of hers who was uh, who was a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. uh, he knew me, and then he, and she heard all kinds of stories about My name came up, and she heard all kinds of stories about me. So I was really kind of... I was really, you know, feeling good about that because I, knew yeah. I, I, I had a reputation then at Gilgo Beach and, you know, in the surfing world in that time. Yeah. Now, this is really mostly in the 60s and 60s to early 70s, mostly the mm -hmm. 60s. I would mm -hmm. say 62 or three until about ooh, 1971 or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, then I started, you know, I started. I had got my horse for one of the surfers down and I, so, I mean, I did all the th th things, but, but each of those things, each of those, those hobbies or sports, you know, gave me something that, um, helped to build my confidence and also to say, okay, you know, and of course for me personally, like, I don't, I don't have an addictive personality. Like some, you know, like sometimes people, mm -hmm. they, they, they get hooked on drugs or they get hooked on, you know, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, become alcoholics, become, you know, heroin addicts. I'm, I'm 
more of a of a, an obsessive person. In other words, I get obsessed by something, mm. and all of a sudden, I got to be the best I can be at it. So it was that way with surfing, mm -hmm. horses, teaching, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the fishing. I mean, so where you know, uh, some people, I would, I got, a, I got my captain's license, for example. Oh, because I wanted to know more about boating and, and, and safety. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that everybody else in this class was, that was taught by a professional captain, you know, from way back, was there getting a captain's license to try to make a living. They wanted to make a living. Oh, they, they, okay. were gonna, they were gonna deliver boats, they were mm -hmm. gonna charter boats. They were gonna, you know, and I was just there to, to learn more because I'm intellectually curious. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that, oh my God, these people are looking to make a living. You know, and I'm just here. Oh, so did did you do this as like a side, like I did, I did. Yeah, absolutely. I did this. I did oh. the chartering. Remember, I was teaching school, so, but I I would do charters on the weekends. I do charters uh, during the summer. Oh. And I would go sometimes after school. But I mean, but the point was, I didn't do it every day, mm -hmm. and I wanted it to be fun, for for me, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't take uh, charters like like for example, I remember. Uh, I knew the, the tides were wrong and the winds were wrong and I would, can't, I would cancel a charter and say, hey, look, this is not a day. Don't waste your money. I, mm -hmm. don't, want to, I don't care about the money. I want you to come out and catch fish, and have a good time. And the mm -hmm. other issue was I love taking kids out, okay? Because most of the time you'll hear, you'd hear like sons would say, well, I, I went fishing. It's really, fishing's really boring. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, it's boring if you're not catching any fish. Yeah. And most of the, their fathers were like, were like, um, uh, my father was there was he didn't he would take me fishing because he knew I liked it but you know he was not a, that into it really mm -hmm. uh, so and those those kids were calling it boring their fathers took them fishing but they didn't know anything about how to catch fish where to catch fish whatever mm -hmm. so they come out with me and they're catching fish and they just love it all oh, of a sudden it's another yeah. world out there yeah another yeah. world you know and when you're catching a fish and you're catching a decent fish and the fish is on the line they get mm -hmm. excited their, mm -hmm. adre their adrenaline is pumping okay mm -hmm. and all of a sudden and i used to always say to their, their their parents i said you know what your kid hooked that fish really the fish hooked him because after mm -hmm. that they wanted to go fishing more often they yeah wanted to learn more about it and mm -hmm. i was always happy to take to take them you know yeah and the, and the yeah. teacher the teacher in me always wanted to teach kids how to fish and how to tie their knots and how to yeah certain kinds of bait on the line and so forth yeah yeah i mean well, it's beautiful i mean everything that you do you're implementing that teaching aspect to it as well yeah because you know what i will say this i think that um while we're alive life should be and usually is about learning of some sort yeah okay? there's a reason why we invest so much time uh and money on educating our children all right mm -hmm. uh and the notion always was that uh, this is before you know in ancient times one got educated not to get a job okay? mm -hmm. not to make money but to become a better wiser possibly happier person that's why people get educated okay mm -hmm. they, the greek philosophers were looking for truth they were looking for understanding things like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i used to give lectures to my high school students much to their parents dismay <laughs> and chagrin about a lot of things but i used to say to them uh excuse me folks uh i know that your parents want you to get a good high school education so you can get accepted to a good college and mm -hmm. why so you can you know find a career and make money and you you know and basically not be poor and also get get you off their backs financially <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get out you get a job get out you're on your own it's yeah tough. or send money back home whatever whatever mm -hmm. so i said but you know what you my i'm a little different i'm i'm trying to make you smarter wiser people and as a consequence maybe happier mm -hmm. and more perceptive and you know truthfully uh, that's what the goal should be the goal should be wisdom okay yeah. well you know it's hard to sell that in a in a capitalist country. It's a capitalist country. This country is about profit. It's yeah, about it's money. profit, make money. It's always about how and, much and, money. And, and, and that's not a horrible thing mm -hmm. because what, what capitalism does, and this country has done very well, is appeal to people's, uh, it incent, look, the profit it incentivizes them to be innovative, creative, uh, to work hard. And I, it's all, these are all positive things. 
Once it gets extreme, that's when, when it becomes a problem. When all of a sudden money becomes the end-all, be-all, and, and uh, decency and personhood and, and uh, tolerance are not part of the package, that's a problem. You know? So anyway, so, so, so um, with the fishing, yeah, I always wanted to teach kids how to fish. And even adults, I would teach them how to fish, okay? Uh, and I had, I had my mentors when I was younger who uh, were excellent fisher, fishermen. Oh, mentor. yeah? Yeah, I remember my mother had a friend, and her husband was a fanatical fisherman, mm. and, and his, his took his kids fishing all the time. He had a son, and uh, one of his kids, you know, well, he took used to take me fishing all the time, and that's he's one of the people uh, that I learned from. That's oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's see, that's great because it's kind of like it takes yeah. a village to raise a child. Yeah, but this is always it, Linda. Is that? Uh, we, I mean, if, if, if young people are lucky, they have many, many mentors, which are not necessarily their parents. Parents have, a, obviously, have a great role to play. It's important. But if a young man or woman is really, really lucky, they will have other role models that will teach them things that their parents cannot teach them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just by maybe observing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of the reasons why I think like the public school is kind of interesting because you're getting, a, like, especially at the high schools, you're getting, instead of having one teacher, like you have an elementary school, mm -hmm. you know, you've got seven, eight, nine teachers during the course of a day. Yeah. Not to mention people who are supervising. You meet a lot of different adults. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. they are, there are things you can learn <clears throat> from those adults, either just by observing mm -hmm. or sometimes by what they say to you. Mm -hmm. okay? Yep. And, and um, uh, so, when it when the area of knowledge is narrow like with fishing okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's something they'd say okay this is really concrete kids can get it they can learn it once they start to catch fish they they are literally hooked okay uh the adrenaline pumps and they want to do it more and more and, mm -hmm. and like lots of sports like people like golfers i don't play golf okay i just thought that golf is one of the dumbest sports ever <laughs> i just did I, I, uh -huh. now, my what was, what was my first job ever? Mm -hmm. I was fourteen. I was a caddy. A caddy. Oh, you were. Yes, at the at Beth Page State Park. Okay. Oh, Beth Page. So, yeah, and by the and I did it. I must have done. I think. I don't know a dozen to fifteen rounds. You know. Mm-hmm. Spent that was 15, fourteen to fifteen days, right? And I hated it. Uh, it was hot usually and you Yeah. And I'm carrying these big heavy golf bags yeah in fact my favorite story <laughs> uh they had like i think in those days doctors generally mm -hmm. wednesdays off and they played golf oh and and of course the beth page state park has five was the five i think five different uh um golf courses okay and they did the red course the black course the green course the black being the most difficult and and if tiger woods played there was for one of the professional tournaments i think he mm -hmm. won that mm -hmm. uh but but you i'm going up and down hills i'm sweating i'm but but the, but the one thing they had some doctors and i guess it was a bunch of japanese doctors i had this uh, kind of a uh heavy set japanese man and he had doctor by the way and he uh, had this very heavy leather hand tooled golf bag mm -hmm. it was gorgeous it was gorgeous mm -hmm. right empty it weighed a ton mm. it was just heavy then of course you put the golf clubs in so now of course to add insult to injury <laughs> as we're going around the course <laughs> he called me not by my he called me bearer bearer in other words like they, like I was on a safari, you know what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. you're an African safari or an Indian safari, they're going to call you Bearer, B-E-A-R-E-R, -E you know, oh. the one, the one who carries, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't believe it the whole time. I just went. So as soon as I could dump that and didn't have to do it anymore, I was happy as a clam at high tide. Okay. So you but, just, you had to just follow them with that bag and walk around with them everywhere, right? Yeah. Now, again, you know, that job as a caddy, you're just a grunt carrying the guy's bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, among people really, really, uh, like the professionals, their caddies are very knowledgeable about what clubs to use, mm -hmm. when to use them, about the golf courses they're on, how to mm -hmm. play a certain hole. I mean, it's that's kind of like a, a coach. Yeah. That's a very different level of, 
caddying. Okay, it's a really mm -hmm. a profession. It's really a profession. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so so um, but I tried to play golf in every decade of my life. When I got to be eight, 17 or 18, I had a friend who was the, they called him the, the club pro. He was my age, but mm -hmm. he was a hell of a golfer. He really knew how to play golf. And he, we, I went out with him once and I, uh, once or twice. And I said, his name was John. I said, John, God, this sucks. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather be at the beach and I'm only here because the surf is down. Otherwise I'd be. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, but every decade of my life, I, in my teens and in my twenties and my thirties, I always gave it a shot. I even mm -hmm. lived in a condo that had an, uh, what they call an executive length golf course. It was a nine. Oh, month. really? I, I, I think the, I think I played on it two or three times with my uncle who was a scratch golfer, my, my mother's younger brother. And he was a hell of a golfer. And, um, uh, anyway, he, he coached me and, uh, and I had a couple of, I had a couple of swings and a couple of hits man i understand i understand just like with fishing mm -hmm. what hooks golfers because once they hit that ball squarely and once that thing is soaring over the heavens and over the golf course right it feels great mm. and of course the thing is it's like <laughs> it's orgasmic to them mm. and like most mm -hmm. orgasms you want to have more and multiple more. ones <laughs> yes, yes. you want to have more and more orgasms yeah times as you can have them and mm -hmm. that's what keeps golfers even the, the the worst golfers in the world they keep trying it they keep keep at it to get that, that yeah that adrenaline that, um, that high yeah now here's the thing you know my other sports i got that feeling certainly yeah. mm -hmm surfing okay now surfing i have an article which i sent to you and you probably i'll have to maybe maybe when you come out i'll make photocopies but i had an article it was in the new york post at the time and mm -hmm. the sports cast the sports writer was a man named larry merchant and larry merchant is big time he used to be on hbo all hbo all the time and he was like the they had these big fights mm -hmm. and the, one of the the announcers on the fights right but he had been a very well known. I don't know what he's if he's retired now or what. Anyway, he wrote the article, mm -hmm. and of course, you know me. I pretty much shoot from the lip, right? So he's asking me these <laughs> questions. Some people, you know, shoot from shoot. the lip. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, because you know, cowboys used to shoot from the hip. Yeah, you know? shoot, shoot from, from, from the hip. hip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so he asked me a couple of questions about surfing, and I gave him a, I gave him a lesson, you know, because I was the surfing. <laughs> I was, well, I was there. I was a surfing instructor with Google. Yeah. Beach. Yeah. So my boss See, said, you're teaching there at the surfing no, too. The, that's what, yeah. So, so my boss said, "Look, he said he's here. He's a reporter. He's here for a lesson. He's going to write about it." I said, "Well, fine, you know." Mm -hmm. So, uh, but he he wrote about me. I mean, I thought he was going to just write about surfing in general, which he kind of did, you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he asked me a couple of questions, and one of them, I was explaining to him about uh, when you like oh, you know was riding and you know this that and the other thing. And I said, of course, one of the biggest, best things that surfers want to do is they want to get locked in the tube. Yeah. And my quote was, yeah, being locked in the tube is, is like, like like returning to the womb or having an orgasm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I knew that where this was going. <laughs> that, now, here's what's so funny about that. I, I had something. I said a couple of other things, too. But that line, people read it and went, the phones lit up at, at, the, at the surfboard company, okay? And people, all of a sudden, people wanted to, appointments for lessons, and I so they're like, <laughs> "Wow, that yeah, happens!" Yeah, yeah. All well, right, no, but, I'm, but, I'm but here's what, so I asked one guy. I said, "Look, just out of curiosity, I said, what, you know, what made you? Because you came in out from the city, you from Manhattan." I said, "So, by the way, I said, you know, what made you want to come out and get a lesson?" Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, it wasn't so much about the surfing. I just wanted to meet the guy who made a comment like that in the paper." Really? Yeah. Because you have to remember, in those days, mm -hmm. still, still uh, the, yeah. was the world was very still, very very buttoned down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so to have the, use the word orgasm in a newspaper, oh. was a little bit shocking. This is remember, this was like like ninth in the sixties sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is hysterical. They're like, no, I just want to meet the guy who actually yeah, said yeah. that. Yeah, of course, this is dead on true, and I'll I'll share the article, and you'll and you'll see the quote, right? Mm -hmm. So I made a lot of money off that quote because people came out for lessons, right? So you had a lot, like you were like booked up? Well, not a lot. I mean, you know, I had on the weekends, all of a sudden, I, instead of getting like, you know, and by the way, I have to say this to you too, being a surfing instructor. And I was, the, I was, I mean, tech, as far as I know, from mm -hmm. what my boss told me, I was the first and only surfing instructor, A, on Long Island, mm. 
and probably on the East Coast early on because really again, surfing was not a big deal like it is today. See, now yeah. everybody surfs. Old grandmothers yeah. surfing, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was, and especially on Long Island, it was like, who surfed? People said, you, yeah. you, you could surf on Long Island. There are waves. So you were like innovative with your surfing uh, there. Absolutely. And by no, and be, believe me, by no, uh, it, was, it was a total, I was totally lucky, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it winds up anyway. Uh, but I used to talk about a perfect job for the summer. Mm -hmm. The lifeguards had to be on the stand all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't, and, but, but my time was my own. I used to get paid. Uh, I think I was getting paid something ridiculous, like fifty dollars. When fifty dollars was, was a lot of money, I used to get paid fifty dollars just to sit on the beach, just just to lie there and be available in case somebody went to the, the surf shop, okay, the rental shop, and said, "I want a lesson." Wow. That, that and then if I was surfing, for example, yeah. they'd wa they'd wave me in, yeah, you know, and I'd be a little irritated to surf, if the surf was good, right? <laughs> But I said, oh, okay, they wave. They must have a job for them. Yeah, yeah. So then I would give them a lesson, mm -hmm. and I was getting paid. I got paid for. What I forget, I forget what the lesson fee was. It was remember these days. I mean, the money in those days. I mean, like twelve dollars was a lot of money. I think mm -hmm. they, were, they were charging twelve dollars an hour for the lesson. Yeah. I got half. Plus, they usually gave me tips. Okay. Okay. So that meant I was getting fifty bucks for the week just to hang. And then mm -hmm. I get these whatever amount of money came from me. And I thought, man, I was happy as a pig and poop, man, because I'm thinking, you know, I'm, this is great. I'm getting a night, keeping my tan up, you know. Yeah. And that was, but all that being said, what surfing did for me, as it did for a lot of young men, mm -hmm. it gave us supreme confidence. Mm. And here's the reason why. That's key. Here's the reason, here, yeah, here's the reason why. You know, the ocean is can be a scary thing for a lot of people. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And lots of times I had people, I would take people out for a lesson and they would literally freeze on the surfboard. They could could not move, would not move. I had a woman, I'll never forget it. She was in the skimpy bikini. She was a real cutie pie. And I take her out and she just was like catatonic almost. Okay. Wow. To the point where uh, I had to bring her back in, but I had to get her through the shore break. Okay. And remember the waves are they weren't huge, but when people yeah. go to the beach and they're not used to, to surfing, mm -hmm. uh, what I would call most of us would call a three or four foot wave. They they think it's eight feet. They think it's a, it's you know it's crazy big, right? Yeah, yeah. Not. That would that would be me. Yeah, I'll be scared yeah, shitless. Yeah. So <laughs> I remember having to literally, I had to actually uh, pry her off the board. Okay? Oh. And then I had to do a lifeguard cross chest carry to and and and, and swim in with her. To get oh. her through the shore break so she wouldn't hurt, you know get hurt or drown yeah right? yeah yeah and that happened more than once but anyway but but the thing about surfing is once you learn to respect the ocean and stop being afraid of it mm -hmm. okay and one a couple of rules i'd always say you never turn your back on the ocean ever when you're there you never turn your back you always got to be looking what's coming up what way mm -hmm. how what's the What's the next wave look like? How big is it? Uh, how fast are the waves coming in? You have to really be very, very cautious. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that, the other part of that was that. Uh, so now, of course, once you get, once you can control your fear mm -hmm. of the ocean. Okay. And by the way, you should be a good swimmer. Now, a lot of people who surf, much to my shock, don't swim very well, if at all. But see oh, that, really? when, when they started using leashes. On, on surfboards, I, yeah. when I started surfing, there were no leashes. Okay, yeah. you yeah. had to be an excellent swimmer because when you when you wiped out and lost your board, you'd have to swim a couple of hundred yards to pick it up again. Right? Oh, so, now you you're just now you got the leash, well, you don't have to go. Yeah. yeah. So now a lot of people said, "Well, I'm attached to the board, and the board floats, and you know, all I got to do is pull my board back." Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I couldn't. When I started hearing stories like that, I was horrified. I mean, I was horrified. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the point was that. Once you uh, got to learn how to surf and you could stand up and then you could make your turns and then start to, to be a little fancy and do you know, hang 10 and hang five, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. backside, backside, bottom turns, you start to really make it look like an art. Mm -hmm. It really kind of is in a lot of ways. It is art, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and you had to do it you know, when you could do it with style and with grace yeah. and, and with flair, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the hot dog is. The hot dog is, I was one of the hot, they used to call me a hot dog. And I was, I could do those things. And, you know, it was kind of, you said, oh my God, this is, 
you have to have skill to do that. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have mm -hmm. confidence to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was all great. But once you got that feeling that you could master the ocean or master the waves on the ocean, mm -hmm. right? Because the those waves could kill you. Okay. Yeah. A bad wave and a bad and a, a break breaking over a bad bottom, mm -hmm. or you could have that board hit you in the head or whatever. All kinds of stuff could happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but once you got that feeling and said, "My yes, I'm good at this now. I'm confident when I do this now, and I can do these moves and." And I'm not going to fall off my board. I'm not going to slip. I mean, you watch these professional surfers. It's almost like they're glued to these boards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how the hell do they do that? It's like skateboarding. Well, but that's the point. Skate Skateboarding was done so that we could do the same kinds of moves on land. Mm -hmm. The surfing came first. The skateboarding. Oh, surfing came first and then you yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. The skateboarding came second. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was trying to say, okay, well, well now with the surfers down, which is down a lot, especially in places like Long Island. He said, well, yeah. I want to be able to make turns and, and you know, get, and keep my, my balance. Oh, so then you practice on the skateboard. Yeah, and buy it. Oh, and I had, I was one of the first people to skate, skateboard on Long Island. Let me tell you that to my, to my mind, in some ways that's more dangerous. You know? But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, if you're screaming down a hill at, you know, 40 miles an hour, which you shouldn't be doing, you know, and you yeah. fall, I mean, you know, you're in trouble, you know, it, it, happened. <laughs> it happened to a lot of us, me included. Mm -hmm. It got all scraped and bloody. And, well, see, here we go. We added something to something that I didn't know. I didn't know you skateboarded. Oh, yeah, as a young, yeah. Now, now, for example, I just can't do any of that stuff. I'm too old. I'm too old. My balance is shot. My my muscles are shot. Everything's shot. <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm, in fact, I'm going to be 77 next month, okay, in June. Oh. And I'm just lucky I can get out of bed in the morning at, at my age and say, oh, June, my God. June what? Was that? June what? When's your birthday? Oh. Uh, the 22nd, 22nd. 22nd. And so, but because it's interesting that, you know, again, a lot of my old surf buddies are dead now. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of them had to stop surfing because their bodies, they had certain physical things. And my foot now, for example, my knees are fine. Yeah. My ankles are fine. That's great. Okay. Yeah. But the problem is I had such, um, because of my horse stuff. Okay. I had, a, uh, uh, my horse broke my back one year. Oh, and so that injury took me a while to recover, but um, but they ha I had a weakness in that for a while. I was still able to surf when I was still younger because I oh. that was my late twenties when I had that accident, and so I was able to surf and continue to surf for a while longer because I was working out and I was swimming. Mm -hmm. I used to swim a half a mile a day in the high school pool on my lunch hour. Oh wow! So yeah. wait, when the horse broke your back, were you in like a full body like cast and not able to walk? No, as a matter of fact, that's an interesting story too. Um, in those days, this I, I what happened was I had a com compressed fat a compressed fra fracture of my L one vertebra. Okay? okay, and they didn't put me in a brace. They made me lie down on my back. Okay, mm -hmm. no pillow, no traction, no nothing, no cast, flat out for two weeks. Two really, weeks. I had a catheter put in in me. Uh, I, I never left that bed for two weeks. Wow. Okay? And it was very hard for me to eat because, again, I'm trying to, I had to eat. I mean, you ever try to eat green peas? <laughs> yeah, they choke on them. On the back, yeah. They roll off they the, they roll off the utensil. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> unbelievable. It was unbelievable, right? And then, of course, after the two weeks in the hospital, uh, they said, okay, uh, we're they fitted me with a, a brace. Mm -hmm. And it, I was in that brace for three months. Wow. Okay, three months. And uh, I wasn't supposed to ride my horse again. And, uh, you know, that really bothered me uh, because, you know, the horses know that every, if, if you have a, you have a disagreement, you know, and that horse beats you, <laughs> he's going to say, he'll try it again. Okay. Now my horse was very, remember, my horse was very spirited. It wasn't just some old nag. He was, yeah. uh, 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 he was a, a, a running quarter horse stallion. Okay. Oh. And stallions, from the you know stallions are dangerous anyway because they're mm -hmm. they're stallions okay mm -hmm. and in order to take a male uh, stallion to a lot of times if they're not going to breed that horse they will geld the, that horse they will castrate that horse okay oh that, that calms them down uh they no longer get excited around mares and things like that and they're they're much calmer and probably safer to ride for most oh, people okay. and i had him as a stallion for a while you know i bought him as a stallion and 
and he was supposed to be gelded, and that the deal, the guy, the, the owner kept putting it off, putting, putting it off, putting it off. But at any rate, um, I digress here. The fact is that that uh, I did wind up about halfway through. I was, I guess, at the month and a half level. I said, screw this, and I got on his back again. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. And and by you know, it was in a, in a corral and stuff like that. But I made sure that he knew. Okay, I was back, and I and I was in control again. And uh, let's move forward. Now I broke. I had him ten years. I that accident was at the around the five year mark. Mm -hmm. okay. And he was hot stuff that horse because he was smart. You know, I mean, you know, horses they they they, they know what they know. You know. So and did I, he ever get gilded? Yes, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Oh, eventually. Okay. Yeah, because. Um, I, I I just felt to, if I was gonna, if I was ever going to sell him whatever, mm -hmm. uh, which I eventually did, you know he's you can't have a horse like that, a stallion like that unless he's got a real purpose in life. Oh, like, like racing. Yeah. Or like the Westerners, they'll they don't they don't necessarily gild their stallions because they're gonna, he likes that they're turning them into cutting horses and reining horses, and a lot of times if they started to actually compete, and the horses win, they become become worth a lot of money. For breeding, okay. Oh, okay. And so you know, my, you know, we're talking about like 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 thoroughbreds. You know, you have a thoroughbred stallion that's that was a winner, like mm -hmm. last time, Terry years ago. I forget how many hundreds of thousands of dollars they used to charge to have him, you know, mate with another mare. Oh, mare. really? Oh, oh yeah. Interesting. His, his sperm. I wish my sperm were that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd be living in a di bigger, different house in a different place, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, so the, so, but both of them. That's another thing too. All the the the, um, the, the hobby slash sports that I've been, been involved in were all confidence boosters for me as an individual. Mm -hmm. Surfing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you meet most surfers who are good at it, mm -hmm. okay, there's a certain level of ego, and I don't want to call it arrogance. I would call it overconfidence almost because mm -hmm. it's like if i can surf these waves if mm -hmm. i can be out there in, in in with nature's most powerful you know objects these big strong powerful waves um uh, i mean the guys who surf like these big wave guys they're just nuts i don't know how they do it the biggest waves i ever surfed were uh, around the 20 foot mark okay wow these guys are surfing waves 60 feet 70 feet i mean wow. it, it, that's ridiculous and those waves they literally will crush you they get crushed wow you. so so and, and they die a lot of guys die they they get killed or you know they they get you know so so um but so most of the surfers that were good most of my old surfing pals they all had a certain level of, of confidence mm -hmm. ego, and they deserved it because it's a difficult difficult sport it mm -hmm. is very hard. yeah and then um, you guys can pick up any women because the women will feel that confidence in you as not well. Not only that, but also remember this. Most of the guys are in great physical shape. They got great bods, okay? Yeah. First of all, you're, you're, when you paddle out, especially in the old days, you know, on the bigger boards, mm -hmm. you're paddling out. So what does that do? It developed your, your choice. Your pectorals. <laughs> oh, my pe I had pectoral. <laughs> I had pectoral. Listen, I had I had major pectoralis. Pector right? Pectorals. Pectoral out there. They called them. In kinesiology, they call them. It's called pectoralis majors. Okay, mm -hmm. I had major pectoralis major. 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 It was serious. I have pictures. I, I, but you saw. I have a couple of pic. They had one picture when I came back from Hawaii. I remember yeah. more bronze. I yeah. Had, I, I, told, I think I told you the story. Uh, there's a girl down at the beach. I remember she used to wear these. She had a great body. She was leggy and you know. But but uh, and she used to wear this white crocheted bikini. You know. Oh, a, nice. A, that sounds nice. <laughs> no, great looking, no, great looking girl, and uh, but she, we used to Gilgo. If you go to go go to Gilgo Beach, even today, there's the Gilgo Beach Inn, and then on on the north side there's the bay, Great South Bay, and then uh, on the south side, in order to get to the ocean, you have to go through an underpass, okay, mm -hmm. because the highway goes over. And so I, I so we used to walk back and forth. We'd get you know French fries and you know, yeah, mm -hmm. have a burger and stuff. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm walking back to the beach, to the ocean side with her. I'll never forget it. She's on my left, you know. And I'm walking down, she says, and out of the blue, she says to me, "You know, Billy." I said, "What?" She goes, "I really, I don't really don't necessarily like walking next to you, you know." 
And I'm thinking, oh, well, wait a second. I said, I obviously can't smell of it in the water all day, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's not it. She goes, she goes, I have to be honest with you. Your boobs are bigger than mine. <laughs> so I feel, I feel self-conscious. I said, well, hey, look, what can I tell you? Yeah, you're like just start paddling. <laughs> yeah, really. Start <laughs> but it was always a, it was always a, a, a laugh, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but, I, but going back to the original thing, yeah, most girls when they go down the beach, you see these surfers, these young guys with these great bods. Okay, they got a nice tan, you know, and and they're confident. Yeah. And just not, you know, women go crazy. They just go crazy for them, and I get yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, if you look good and you know you have this talent for surfing, and you're watching them and they have yeah, this confidence, okay. like just. Amazing. Now, the, now, you as a woman will know about this. Mm -hmm. The physical part, okay, that gets us all attracted to one another. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. But the but the bottom line really is, the whole deal uh, can be just totally destroyed once the people open their mouths and try to communicate with each other. Yeah. Because there are such things. I must admit. Yes, you have confident surfers. But some of them are dumb as doors. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Some of them are inarticulate, uh, just not bright and perceptive. I mean, yeah. and that could be, by the way, not just service. I mean, that, that's anybody. I yeah. Mean, I, yeah. It, so, the, but, and women, I've always known that women do seem to tend to say, you know what, even if a guy doesn't look like the, uh, a Greek god, if he's smart and funny, yeah, and I'm attracted. Okay. Yeah, it's totally true. I mean, that's completely true. And there's also like the chemistry between you and that other person as well. That's true. That's true. Because I've had people who are perfect on paper. All right. I'm like, wow, this person's perfect on paper. And we hang out and talk and there's like zero chemistry between us. Yeah. Conversations yeah. not flowing. I was like, this sucks. Like you're perfect on paper. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's another thing here, too. I, I used, I, I'm i a big believer to it, especially when I was younger, in the whole notion of pheromones. Yes. You can't see them. Yes. And there's no apparent specific. Uh, That's very uh, true. But for some reason, I do know this. Human beings have an aura. Mm -hmm. We have an aura. We mm -hmm. have a, there are, we, we, you know, our bodies, electricity is what makes our heart beat in certain ways and certain yep. rhythms. Yep. And so, and there are some people whose auras and whose pheromones are in sync with yours. Yes. And yep. I knew that there are certain women when I got near them and they got near me, the sparks would fly. It's over. Others, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's over. And others, others, I was like, like, nothing, right? Yeah, as gorgeous as they were, mm -hmm. I just said, you know what? I ain't feeling it. Okay, I ain't fit because the pheromone thing just wasn't happening. Yes, okay. yes. I can, I can think of a couple of women, which, you know, I just, I remember one in particular. We, every time we tried to go out to a movie, or it didn't work. Restaurant, no, no. <laughs> what happened? You just, you just couldn't make it to the movie. No. But... She'd walk through the door, and that was it. And that was it. We were done. Yeah, that was it. I mean, movie. yeah, it totally is true. Like, I have this one person where, that's what got us together was the yeah. pheromones like whatever it was like i smelled him and he smelled me and it was it yeah it's over and, it, and, and, it, and what's interesting it's not about perfume you know it's just that perfume or colognes you know it's just that, that somehow there is a certain that certain something that you 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 kind of sniff it feel it whatever yeah and and, and it's really it's really electric you know yes so so but i think that i don't know how we got into this conversation but it's oh, oh, <laughs> well okay. i mean how do we get into any of our conversations yeah, well yeah, you know well. i'll tell you what it is too because you know going back to oh, the original thing was you see these very um uh, uh attractive looking male bodies as surfing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the women see them but but again once they get close they go well you know what great looking but you know what eh, boring or stupid or you know not funny and you know i mean they, there's a whole bunch of stuff that the reality kicks in uh but then sometimes if they get close enough and the pheromones are in sync mm -hmm. nothing matters nothing yes matters. Mm -hmm. okay. not looks not anything it's just just let's jump on each other's bones and you know ride it till it dies yeah ride exactly it. exactly uh i i okay. found that out later in life <laughs> <laughs> well, 
most of us. But, but you know, honestly, I'm glad I actually found out. At least I found out later in life that those kind of things existed because I never knew. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's it's exactly right. Now, so that was really surfing. Surfing, I think, was is um, it's an exciting sport. It's a difficult sport. Uh, I have to say this: I used to always equate surfing with bullfighting in the following mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Bullfighters, they're crazy, okay? But the bullfighters, uh, then when people say, oh, wow, they're fearless. No, the best bullfighters were always had a certain level of fear. The issue was their mastery of that feel by excellent technique, okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, and I used, to, I used to study bullfight. It's a long story. I used to study bullfighting when I was in high school, okay? <laughs> it had to do with, had to do with the horses because I started with the horses oh, okay. and I learned about the horses that the picadors ro rode mm -hmm. to, prepare, to prepare the bull for the toreador and it's a long mm -hmm. story anyway. Okay, but but so but what the, the toreadors do, the bullfighters do, in order to be really excellent at their craft and survive, they have to control their fear and use their their technique and practice. Uh, and move of their movements and stuff like that in order to survive in order to make it look beautiful and artistic okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people find that hard to believe people who are not spanish and grown up grew up in that culture find it very hard to find the beauty some oh they're going to kill the bull well okay that's another conversation for another day but but in terms of doing what they do with that bull okay it's a, it's almost like a it's a balletic kind of a, of an event. It's like a dance. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. surfers have to do the same thing. They have to control their fear. It's not that they're not afraid. I mean, unless they're stupid. Okay, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. there's a certain level of, of fear, and they have to control it and say, "I can master this wave because of my technique and my mm -hmm. practice, my knowledge, uh, so forth and so on." And they do it, and they do it with style and grace. Yeah. Yeah. See? And that's the similarity between, to me, always what was between bullfighting yeah. and surfing. The best surfers and the best bullfighters had that in common. Mm -hmm. okay? So that kind of takes care of the surfing thing for me. Um, the horse thing, uh, I'm looking at my watch here. The horse thing is there. I loved horses first. Mm -hmm. I loved horses first. The, from the moment I knew what a horse was, that was it. Mm -hmm. okay? yeah. and we'll, now to show you how, how studying psychology has I don't know whether you want to call it contaminated me, uh, malformed me, or whatever. I remember sitting on my surf. Remember, I had this. I started surfing before I got my horse, right? And I had ridden horses before, you know, but I didn't have my own horse. Uh, but when I used to sit out in a surfboard, you know, you're sitting there waiting, waiting for the waves to form and then mm -hmm. paddle into it and surf. Yeah. But you're sitting a a astride your surfboard, like like you would sit sit astride a horse. Yeah. And yeah. the waves are rolling underneath you, okay? Just like the horse would be moving underneath you. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize that unconsciously, I was saying, okay, well, this is this is like riding a horse to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And then certainly when I got my horse, you know, I said, oh, yeah, this reminds me when I used to, sometimes when I was on a nice casual lope with him, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, sitting on my board, you know, uh, relaxing, waiting for the next wave. So those two things were similar in many ways to me at, at, at the first unconscious level, and then it became conscious. Mm -hmm. said, those are things that were very similar to me in terms of its, their physicality. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and ride, and I used to, I rode my horse, he was a racehorse, and I rode my horse three times in a mat, what they call a match race, okay? Oh, and that must have been fun. Well, yeah, but it was scary, you know? I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like, I mean, a horse can like max out around 45 miles an hour, you know, mm -hmm. run a run. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound like much when you're driving a car 60 miles an hour, but when you're in the back of a, of a, when you're on back of a horse, I'm sure it's yeah. scared, I'm scary, shitless, it's, 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 probably. It was, it's like riding, like riding a locomotive, you know. Because you can just, he can just flip you off, right? Yes, which happened uh, more than once. <gasps> In fact, well, not in the match races, okay, but a lot of times, you know, like working, conditioning horses, things like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but but I remember talking about adre uh, orgasmic adrenaline rushes. Mm -hmm. uh, when I used to, I, I raced my horse three times, and a match race just says, hey, somebody says, hey, look, 100 bucks says that my my horse is faster than your horse. Mm -hmm. And I say 100 bucks, or maybe 200 bucks as you're a liar, you know? Mm -hmm. And we'd, we had a 
place where we would race. So we'd be at a certain, um, we had a place, place where we could race. And we even had a, uh, a, what do you call it? Um, starting gate. You had mm-hmm. a, a sh- small starting gate. So um, at any rate, I raced them and my horse won all three times. Okay. But the trouble was I had already, I had already started to get him to be a trail horse. I was calming, calming him down. Once yeah. he started to race and plus he was still a stallion. Oh, he got, he got what they call, he got racy again. All of a sudden, all we wanted to do was run. And yeah. all we wanted to do was. And this start. is probably before he was gilded too, right? Yeah. So, so at any rate, um, I said, I had to put a stop to that. He but got you hooked. Want, yeah. But you want to talk about, you want to talk about orgasmic. You want to talk about uh, exciting, man. You know, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You know? So those are things I was really, like I said, I, I was really big on, uh, the adrenaline rush as a young, young, mm-hmm. man. a lot of young men. Are, you know? Now, now let me get into the fishing. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you get and where fishing becomes interesting is and becomes kind of orgasmic to a certain degree is when you have big fish or actually certain fish on the line with certain equipment. Again, your adrenaline's pumping and you're totally focused. Okay, you're totally focused on on. What you're doing with that fish, you know, lifting mm-hmm. over the bottom, mm-hmm. playing that fish, get into the boat. And this now brings us, here's where all three, I'm going to combine all three and what they meant to me. Your Asian background, you might probably know this from just from your Asian background. But the Asian philosophers were always big about being in the now, mm-hmm. being present mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. life. In other words, mm-hmm. You only you don't have the past that's gone. Mm-hmm. You don't have the future, but you need to be alive and and appreciative in the now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you are though you're in the in those sports doing what gives you that rush of adrenaline, you are never more focused in your life than those when you're doing those things. And mm-hmm. so that's what all to me that's what how I, I tie it all three together. They all did the same thing for me. They they focused my mind. Nothing else mattered at the time. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing. Mm-hmm. No bills, women, uh, you know, job. Nothing, mm-hmm. nothing. They were all. I was like totally, I'm totally focused. Yeah, you, it's like you're in the zone. Yeah, that's right. You're absolutely in the zone. And this is something. And this is why people do certain kinds of recreational. Uh, sports and stuff, recreational things, because when they do them and they do them well and they kind of love them or whatnot, they focus their minds mm. and nothing else becomes important. Yes, uh, your, your your worries, your cares, nothing. It's like okay, I'm 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 locked in this tube. I'm gonna try to make this wave. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 riding my horse and I'm I'm uh, doing this with him and I'm doing that mm. with him and uh, same thing. And fishing, of course, I'm playing. I've got a, I've got a, a, a forty pound striped bass on my line. I know it. I can feel it, the size. I can feel, it, feel its power. The mm-hmm. whole thing. Man, I am totally focused on that. So those are the things that that again, as an obsessive personality, mm-hmm. I was obsessed saying, okay, I want to, I want to repeat these experiences as mm-hmm. often as I possibly can. Yeah. Okay. yeah. How about that? Well, that's beautiful. I love that you. Um, combined all of them, wrapped it up in the, you know, the lesson that you learned from all, because as you were speaking, that's what I was thinking, where I was like, you are in the present moment, and you're in the now, so it's a perfect way to end this podcast with you, Captain Schiavo, so thank you very much. Sure, you know, and you know, you could call me Captain Willie, you know. I don't know, I never called you Captain Willie, it's either Mr. Schiavo, right, or Captain Schiavo, I don't know, I like Schiavo. Yeah, but you know, I have to tell you how that came about, you know. Captain Willie, um, my um, I used to tell students, especially especially after I had my captain's license, I said, you know, uh, I said some of my friends call me Captain Willie. I guess mm-hmm. Some used to call me Willie. My 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 one friend who was a, a retired dentist, now deceased, but he always called me Willie. Mm-hmm. Now, I, and you know, it's funny. Different people called me by different names. So when yeah, I was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was younger, my surf surfing friends called me Billy. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, my mother never did. She only called me William. Or <laughs> Will. William when I was in trouble. Mm-hmm. Will, Will when she liked me. 
Oh, okay. But mostly I heard William from Pop. Yeah. <laughs> my, I think I told you before, my father never used my first name. Called you pal. Called me pal. I mean, really, it was, it was really, it was really funny. Yeah. But most of my friends uh, in my younger days called me Billy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even now they still call me Billy. Okay. Mm -hmm. but it's, mm -hmm. And, uh, and my, a lot of other people that I met later on would call me Willie, you know. So my friend Arnie called, used to always call me Willie. Anyway, long and short of it was, I used to, I, somehow I said to, uh, I forget what group I said it with first, but I said, uh, you know, only, I guess I was talking about grades or something. I said, you know, only my closest friends call me Willie and they call me Captain Willie. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, and by the way, and that and that's all. And the only other ones, and this was at the time, not true. Mm -hmm. I said, the only one, other ones who call me Captain Willie or my A to A plus students, I let, <laughs> I let them call me Captain Willie. They don't have to call me Mr. Schiavo or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Only that. So of course now what happens? Oh, you know, you know how, how young people are. They go, well, wait a second. We're going to start calling him Captain Willie, especially the D students and F students in hopes that I would forget. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that somehow by calling me Captain Willie, that when he does the grades, you know, I'll get a better grade. Cause yeah, gonna... yeah, like oh, maybe he'll like me because I called him by a name that he likes. Right, that only calls his like his his, his, his friend, his, his friend. Yeah, his friends. And, yeah. And, and any students, maybe he'll give me an A too. I yeah. guess that's what their thinking was. So all of a sudden, it kind of stuck. Well, so they want to feel special too, because you said that you would allow those people to yeah, call yeah. you that. They so want to feel special too. So now I've got these two cars, right? My my spiffy red convertible like that you have a picture of. Mm -hmm. My license plate on that one is Captain Willie. Mm -hmm. It's not it, it's C P T W Y L L Y because you are only allowed eight digits on this thing. Yeah, yeah. So that one says Captain Willie, and then the and then of course my 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 S U V says Captain Bill C A P T B I L L. Mm -hmm. And every captain, everybody, every captain named Bill in New York State. They can't wait for me to die so that they can have my license plate. They, they, all, they all want Captain Bill. That's funny. Have, yeah, they all have. They all have a different configurations. To, like I saw one guy with C A P T B I L, and I mean. But you I mean, have the bill B I L L. I the bill. Yeah. So, <laughs> and by the way, when I when I when I registered when I went for it, I thought there's no way I'll get Captain. I'm not, there's no way. Yeah, it's someone kind of has to have it. And I guess everybody felt the same thing that, oh, there's no way I could ever get that because somebody else already has it. Well, nobody else had it. <laughs> well, no, I think you were more innovative, like you've always been. And then you were probably the first person to be like, you know what? This would be fun. Just put Captain Bill. Yeah, and it's so funny because now everybody, when I even around, like around town, most people know me. They, they don't, call, you know, they call me Captain, Captain Willie. Yeah, okay. like it depends on what I drive. I always tell people, well, whatever I'm driving, that's what you call me. So if I'm driving my convertible, <laughs> you call me Captain Willie. If I'm driving my SUV, you call me Captain Bill. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. But my students, and that's another thing. Before you get off, oh, get off. Uh, uh, the uh, my college students, I had them calling me Captain Willie. Mm -hmm. Now you have to understand at the university level, everybody you know wants to be a, you know, with their PhDs. They but you know they they're going to be called doctor. Yeah, they want to be like fancy. Yeah, well, and so I, you know, of course, I me, I would be have been as an adjunct, I would be called without my PhD called Mister, right? Mm -hmm. I would tell them to call me Captain Willie. Do you know how many faculty went ape shit? Really? Well, yeah, because they were thinking, wait a second. What about this guy? Doesn't he worry about what? It's undignified, and, and he's a professional. Protocol and, and well, like yeah, yeah, respect. You know, yeah, what is that about? In other words, how how come you know all of a sudden it was became something weird that was so different from what they were used to, you know? Mm -hmm. And and uh, but remember, I was also teaching future teachers of English. And I was trying to say, look, there's a there's there is a time, the the greatest dignity that you'll ever get from students is when you do the best possible job in educating them and letting them know you care about them. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. they know, yes. Once they say, you know, this guy, this teacher, man or woman, they these, this person really cares about me. Yeah. Cares about my future and cares about mm -hmm. you know what makes me tick. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate respect and dignity you can get from students and i've never worried about whatever they i would know i have to say so if you're not calling Cal captain willie you're gonna have to call me mister okay but i would <laughs> yeah but i would also call them by the last names so ms mm -hmm. chung, chung mm -hmm. you know mr mr smith or mr mm -hmm. jones so, yeah 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 but on that note i think uh gee i haven't talked about the about my, my sporting life uh 
in a long time. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You so we can we can do another one because I'm sure you have more stories. Well, like you know, Linda, come on, I have stories up you know up the kazoo. Well, that's what I mean. Like that's why I I mean today I just came to the table with nothing because I was like, listen, we're <laughs> going to talk about your your hobbies, and I don't need to really bring anything because you'll have stories to tell me. Well, no, I, but I have to say, you know, like I got to go back to horses for a second. I, uh, among horse people, they would always say especially the ones who jump, you know, they have the, um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they would say three falls make a rider, rider. In other words, once you've had three falls, mm -hmm. you cut, you pretty much know how to ride and you become proficient. Mm -hmm. If that's true, I'm the best rider ever on the planet. Cause I had way more than three falls. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be Frank because you, you want to beat everybody because you you want to be the best yeah yeah you know but but you know that's that's and i was i was i used to i used to ride my stallion bareback i mean that mm. was that was to show you how crazy i was yeah days. yeah isn't that harder and you can easily well fall it's off. also more dangerous because once you lose control of that animal man you're he, gone well he could do a lot of damage he could do a lot of damage you know they yeah yeah stallions are, stallions are crazy you know but mm -hmm. but i mean you know and he was pretty uh, what they used to call it, an honest horse. He was a pretty honest horse. He was who he was, you know, but mm -hmm. still in old stallions um, uh, can be unpredictable, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've never been surfing. I've never been on a horse. Fishing, maybe, but not really, not like a real, real fish, fishing. Yeah, yeah. I think it maybe went once yeah. or twice, but no, never yeah. done any of those things. Yeah, I've been lucky to be able, I've been, that's something I've been very lucky in my life to be able to do those kinds of things. And not, mm -hmm. not everybody gets those that those chances and also with that level of variety really you know what I mean? yeah well yeah exactly that that's why you have such um a confidence also about yourself because you have all of these ultra what did you what was the word that you said these um super confident super um superior confidence i think is what you said right uh, I don't remember now. Uh, yeah, but, some, uh, something to that extent. But if you have that, and you have that in all of these hobbies that you've done, you've just built your confidence level and, to, and, and to an extreme. And, and I'm going to end with this too. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest job for teachers to do with young people. Part of the job is to build up their confidence in what they know, what they can do, and who they really are. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's a that's a that's all. That's another podcast about building confidence mm. in teachers to make them confident people. Mm -hmm. if they're not confident, they'll a lot of times they'll be depressed, suicidal. They'll be yes, uh, the confidence is a big thing. So I like that. That's good. I think I'll I think I'll have to figure how to do that with my son. Yes, we'll talk about that at another time. Okay, sounds that's good. It's exactly an hour. I can't believe we've done that. That's great. We, we uh, I know. I was trying to wrap it up when you said that perfect um, wrap up of all three. I was like, perfect. I'm going to try to wrap it all up. <laughs> all, right, all right. So we'll, uh, we'll talk again. Okay. Sounds good. Have a great day. And I'll see you.